we really have to ask ourselves, what role are we are we playing here? And why are we here? Oh, is it because we want our child, you know, we, 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 we want them to play for our club, you know, the main the main player? Is it because of our own personal interest or is it for them? If it's for them, we have to really ask ourselves, how can we support them on the journey? Welcome, Bola, to Behind the Boots. We Thanks for having you. me. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. And you are parent to a son at a Premier Indeed. League Academy. Indeed I am. My Indeed I am. <laughs> His name's Kari, Kari Ransom. And he's at Arsenal, Arsenal Academy. Yeah, and Good old Arsenal. <laughs> Five points clear at the top of the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really excited about this because we don't often get to hear the parent experience. And obviously we know each other, Bola, and we've been on the sidelines chatting. But even that's quite unique because our sons are at different age groups. To gain experience and wisdom and just, you know, share your thoughts on the journey so far is going to be really insightful for us and to other, you know, other parents that are going to be, be listening. So I want to just take it back to the start for you. Like, what's your background in in either sport or any sort of activities that you're involved in where did it start for you on this journey all right well so i've never i've always liked the you know i've always liked sport i've always liked staying engaged in sport where i can for us it goes back to just going good old-fashioned grassroots football we used to take Kari along actually he's been playing football since he was very young he's had a love for football when he was very young and we used to take him to, you know, little kickers when he was about two, three years old. And you're sort of thinking, hang on, it sounds like he's quite good as a footballer. And so, you know, got him signed up with a Sunday league grassroots team called Hackney Downs All Stars at the time or something like that. And, you know, it was really good. So, you know, getting up Sunday mornings and taking him to training once a week. And it was quite cool. I quite enjoyed it. I mean, I, I enjoy football anyway, as I say, I'm an Arsenal fan, but I enjoy football anyway, as a new, you know, to just watch. And it's quite nice. I really enjoyed the idea of seeing him connect with something that he enjoyed, the kind of team camaraderie. And I thought, cool. So I was, I was up for supporting him. You know, I had no issues getting up in the morning at all and taking him to training and things like that. And uh, so he was there and, and he used to sort of play outfield. And I remember when, uh, you know, he get a bit more competitive. And there was a time I remember for him, he ended up going in goal. And I thought, okay, cool. He's only going in goal because no one else will do it. And I remember, and he went in goal again, and he went in goal again. And I thought, are you, you okay going in goal? He said, no, I quite like it. He said, are you sure? He said, yeah, I like it, I like it. But I wasn't entirely, I didn't entirely believe him. I was thinking, is it that he just doesn't trust anybody else? <laughs> or is he really enjoying going in goal? Mm -hmm. and, and I remember the coaches would phone me and they'd be like, bother. We need to get Kari some extra goalkeeping training because he is, he's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. He had a fantastic game. And I was thinking, actually, maybe he really is wanting to do this goalkeeping <laughs> thing. So there came a point where I really bought into the idea. I thought he's clearly enjoying it because that was for me the main thing. So long as he's enjoying what he's doing, I don't really mind supporting him with whatever he's doing because he just loves the game. Mm -hmm. So I remember when we, you know, so, so it connected, switched in my mind, this is what he wants to do. So I thought, of course, I'll back him on that. And then, so I remember when we, we went to a tournament. He was probably under nine age group. So I know some of the kids get into the system at sort of eight and seven. He was about, under, he was under nine and he was doing a tournament at the time. And they did really well. They got to the final of the tournament. I remember there's a guy that came up to me. He was a scout at, at Charlton. And he was like, you know, is that your son? I said, yeah. He said, he's really, really good. He said, I'd, I'd love to invite him over to, to Charlton's academy, train with, train with the boys. Uh -huh. And I was like, fantastic, you know, well, how does it work? And he just said, yeah, just bring him over. Very, very casual, very informal. He just said, yeah, bring him over. I'll be happy to have him train with the boys. I was like, all right, cool. Sounds great. And on the same day at the same tournament, a place in South East London, actually, I think it was Thames Meet or something like that. At the same tournament, he, another guy approached me. I remember it was, it was a guy from Chelsea because he was wearing the old Chelsea track. <laughs> the coats. <laughs> yeah, he was on coat, man. He obviously wanted attention. So I was like, so he, he comes over and he was like, um, right, okay, you, you know, we like, you know, that your son. I said, yeah. He said, well, we're doing a talent ID. And I thought, well, what's that? And he said, well, it's basically a day where we invite talented kids or who we think are talented kids down to Cobham, which is where their training ground is. And we basically have a look at them. I was like, all right, so you should, let me take your details and I'll send you the details to invite you. So I'm like, well, cool. 
That sounds like really, you know, you know loads of fun. So I took, took both of their details. And then after that, we started to take him to, uh, to Charlton. And I remember, you know, I remember that but those early days so clear. I remember driving him up there. Even I was nervous, you know, him, him going there and <laughs> training because it was his first day and he's training with guys that obviously have been there already for, for some time. Uh, and I remember his first match. I've still got the pictures I was looking at recently when he was, you know, at Charlton training with the boys. Remember, he wasn't signed or anything like that, but he was invited to play a game for Charlton. I was like, oh my gosh, so nervous. What's going to happen? I remember he conceded the goal. I was like, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> but I'm thinking, if, he, if I'm stressed the way I am at the sidelines, what's, what's he feeling like? But I remember those days so clearly. But anyway, he did really, really well training with Charlton. We'd go up there like twice a week. Now, four weeks later, the, the talent ID at Chelsea came up and uh, took him down there. And uh, I remember the talent ID, they started. My gosh, was he good? Because one thing about him, he was very, I mean, his desire to, to succeed and, and to do well is very, very high. So he's a very hard worker. So yeah. on the day, he stood out like a sore thumb. Everything about the way he performed on that day. And I remember they said at the start, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll hear from us in the next two or three weeks. Literally, we, we barely left the room. We all kind of <laughs> they were on you. I like, Come here, finish the talk to you. So I was like, Fine here now. <laughs> yeah, so, so exactly. So he was, well, well, actually, he said, we really like him and we'd like to invite him down to, to, to come on trial. So I was like, okay, okay. And I said, how does it work? He said, well, you know, you know we'll, we'll give you the date. You can bring him down and we'd like him to basically sign a trial contract. So then I started to think about things like the logistics of distance, because yeah. at that time I was living in Canary Wharf. Yeah. And just getting to that, that, that ID day was about an hour and 20 minutes. It was, it was a long time it took. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, well, if, if he gets an offer, then we'll, it's just something we'll consider. Then another coach, whilst I was at Chelsea, who worked at Chelsea, said to me, I also know, you know, I'm very connected to Arsenal as well. And if, if Chelsea like him like this and as good as he is, I can probably get him to Arsenal. Now that triggered my ears, not because I'm an Arsenal fan necessarily. Oh no, it was not. No, 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 and said, we'd be happy to sign two off from a contract. Because I was kind of playing the two off against each other at the time. I said, look, Chelsea are in, well, three actually. Chelsea are into chart and are interested. And Arsenal were keen too. So I said, you know, what, what do you want to do? Is, is it going to happen or not? So, and I, I think that kind of, worked, to be honest, that little kind of, well, you know, there's more than one person interested. So, so they were quite keen and they said, look, we'll, we'll bring him in. We'll let him train and we'll have a look at without signing contract, but, you know, we'll be actually signing papers as such. Anyway, so we, we went to Arsenal, Arsenal liked him and Arsenal signed him. And uh, it was a proud moment because he, he, he had impressed, he'd done his bit, you know, he'd gone down there, he, he'd done his bit, he'd got interest. And I was, I was really, really proud of him. I mean, he was really clearly very proud of himself too. Yeah. I mean, I was still kind of mindful, obviously you have played, you, you know, you have it in your mind. Was it the right thing? Is it the right club? And you probably, looking back at it now, probably overthinking things. But but it kind of worked. He was somewhere where you know he he was enjoying it. He was he was he was connecting and bonding with the rest of the players as well. I mean, I was I was obviously very proud that he was somewhere where you know the, mm -hmm. the cat one category one academy. They seemed to have a good setup. They were quite impressive, and that was it. I remember asking him even when we were at the time he signed. I wasn't quite sure because I don't really tell you what's expected from you and what's expected from the child. So I'm like, well, because my, my family, are all, we're quite a close family. In the, like as a, as a, not just our household, but also cousins and, and, and sisters and brothers. So things like birthdays, we all like to go around on the day. Like today, for example, it's my, nie my niece's birthday. So we would nearly like to all go there and cut a cake, wish happy birthday, that kind of stuff. Yeah, old, yeah. Good old old fashioned Cosby type family. Yeah. And uh, it's like this. So I, I, <laughs> yeah, so, so I wasn't entirely sure how how strict they were about when you can come, because yeah. I wasn't. And also, obviously, it was, the number of days were going to increase. It was going to go from two days of football a week to about four days. Yeah. So, Bola, on, on that sure. on that point of of just general commitment. Yeah. Do you think you were, were you prepared for this, or how were you prepared for the, for the next stage of this journey when it came to commitment? And like you just mentioned there about about the you know family and how important you know gatherings are 
How have you sort of navigated that as things have developed for for Kari? Well, I, I I run my own business. I kind of work for myself. So for me, it wasn't it, it wasn't too bad because I at that time anyway, I I would I was picking and choosing when I went to the office anyway. I mean, I work most of the time in the office now, but because I was self-employed, it meant I had the freedom to get taken taken to football as and when needed. Also, my partner Benedicta, she was also self-employed, well, she still is self-employed. So she's also able to take him down to football as or when. So for us, getting them to training and and back wasn't wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. If we were working nine to five or single period, it would have been a massive struggle. Because mm -hmm. the training sessions were from around about five o'clock, I remember, five or seven. Yeah. And it would we'd just been a struggle to make it all work. Yeah. But for us it worked. It it just seemed to work and you know, because it was something that he was involved in and enjoying, I was willing to make that sacrifice. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot, certainly a lot of commitment from a time perspective, but we were able to make it work. Yeah. And in terms of enjoyment factor, where would you put it yeah. on the scale, especially as being, you know, a dad of a, of a, of a goalie? It sounds like it, it kind of could be quite stressful, right? But so, so how is, how, have, yeah, how have you enjoyed the journey or? Or perhaps the I, I I really enjoyed the journey. It's been a lot of ups and downs and because it's your child and you know, your your well, I've always felt like it, I'm on that same journey with him. I feel like all the stresses and the highs and lows he's going through, I feel like I'm there with him. It's a big test of character for the child as well. I mean it's nobody told you that, but it's definitely a big test of character from the for the child. Because they're gonna go through and he's gone through high po high points and low point and it's like how do you deal with them and how have you been able to support those especially those low points how do you how do you support that well what what i what i try to do I, i've always from the start i've always said to him my message has always been enjoy the journey just enjoy the journey try to focus on it's an experience you know so the way i've always seen it and the way i've always tried to get him to see it is Regardless of what happened, you can always say to your mates when you're 50 years old, hey, I, you know, I played for Arsenal when I was younger. <laughs> Not a bad thing to talk about in the pub. So I thought, I thought right. you know, so, so I always thought, it's a journey that you're on right now. We don't know how long you're going to be on it for, but enjoy it whilst you're young as well. You know, you've got no commitment as such. So, so go out there and enjoy it and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I've also tried to, I, I've always tried to be a bit about mindset as well. So what I've tried to do is get him to, to really analyze himself and to, to, to get to understand that life is about ups and downs. The real world is about ups and downs. So when that coach says to you, or if you're not getting, you know, to, to play and get games where you'd maybe like to play, or you're not getting the minutes that you want, ask yourself what you can do. Is there anything in my control that I can do to change that? Mm -hmm. And work to try and improve that. You know, try and be a better player if you can. Try and learn to analyze yourself if you can. Don't blame the don't blame the coach or blame the club. Try try and get away from the blame culture mm -hmm. if you can. Let's try and focus on what you, you could do. Uh, and that's the way I that's the, always the message I try to give him. I, I, I never talk about the coach or about what the club are doing wrong. I always think try to get him to think about what he could do to better improve himself as a person and as a player. And that's just the message I always try to give him. And, and how does he take that in? Is he, is he on board with that way of thinking? I, th I, I think he tries. Uh, it, obviously, it's not easy to do when you're a child in that environment because it's very competitive. It's very, very competitive. I mean, you know, you, you're always, you're often seeing kids coming in, new kids coming in. The reality of it is, is they're just looking for the best product out there. It's a, it's a business for them. Obviously, they're, they're never going to tell you that, but the reality of it is it is. And you could be released at almost any moment. And there's not really anything that you can say that's going to change that worry of getting released other than to prepare them for the fact that at some point you won't be, you, you probably won't be at this club. I mean, that's, that's something I, I, I try to say from now, especially these sorts of ages. I said, at some point you might not be at this club and it might be that your, your, your future is in another club or in another country or in another industry. But the most important point is you're enjoying it. Do the best you can. And let's just see how it goes. Let's see where this journey takes you. But yeah, it's 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 definitely something that is a big weight weight of. I'd say it, it would be something that consumes a lot of his mind mind space. Definitely. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, it becomes, I think it becomes part of their identity, doesn't it? Because did you yeah. find in terms of family, um, you know, you said you had quite a big family, you know, everyone starts to get a bit interested in that journey, right? You know, the footballer and the family and they become the footballer or, you know, the yeah, awesome yeah, player. Yeah. They, they do, yeah, yeah. And then everyone asks, oh, how's it going, blah, 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 blah. I mean, sometimes I feel like it's almost even more stress. The, the, the more family members that get excited about, you know, about the journey, there's even more people to disappoint if it goes wrong. And sometimes that can be a little bit like, oh, God, I, I hope they don't think that it's, it's, it's plain sailing and he's made it. Because no one really understands it the way, really, that I understand it. I, I understand the reality of it. And the reality of it is, there's lots and lots of children vying for a very, very, very few spaces. On a probability basis, chance of succeeding are actually quite small. But but everybody else just assumes that once you've made it into the Arsenal Academy, hey, you know, you're in the money. <laughs> you're in the first so, team tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. So you, you almost, I sometimes almost feel like saying, well, you know, you know, downplaying the whole thing to everybody. But I don't do that. But the, the, I'm just mindful that there is an element of, 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 kind of added pressure, the more the family, the longer the journey continues and the more the family buy into this whole thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And how have you managed like the school, the school sort of element of it? Because it's he's he's still in school, right? Full time at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. How do you manage that? That's an interesting one. So, I mean, he goes to a private school at the moment and uh, it's, it's actually quite a sporty school, but the headmaster is, I think rightfully, wants them to be in school as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I think what tends to happen is, and he's made it quite clear, at, at, at our school, he originally said he never, ever approves things like day relief. He made an exception for Kari to let him go to day relief. And that was partly because he was going to leave the school relatively late on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. about two o'clock. And the school finishes about 3.30. And he was, that was on the basis that that was only, that that, that was it. And he, he said to me, look, Bola, I'm, I'm going to let him do it, but I've never previously approved this. Mm -hmm. So, so he's been going to this day release on a Tuesday and he had an England call up recently. You know, I was really proud of him there. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> and he, he, that involved missing another week of school. And uh, they said, all right, great. You know, he's doing well. We'll let him do it. And now we're starting to have discussions about taking more time off school. Mm -hmm. And he's, he, he's clearly quite concerned because he still is of the view, whilst he appreciates the car is doing well, he, he's always said to me that this is all just, it's just basically like a giant funnel. And all, they, all they're doing is, dropping people, dropping people, dropping people. We want to, to, to have an option if he reached the point where he were to get dropped. They can continue off, you know, in another career. So, and I, I totally respect it. I'm not one of these parents, you know, we're not parents that, that are going to say, no, 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 no. It must be this way. It must be that way. We try to find some kind of balance. It, it can actually be quite tricky because you, 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 you don't want it to miss opportunities with the club, but at the same time, you don't want it to fall behind with his schoolwork. So what we always say is we'll make sure he catches up or if he starts to slip, we'll review whether he's allowed to do this kind of day releases and all this kind of outside activity. Mm -hmm. So far, I haven't fallen behind, but, but our school has made it quite clear that, look, if, if it becomes several days per week, we're going to be against it. And he might have to reconsider what he does. So that's where we're at with that. And, and how comfortable do you feel with that sort of communication between yourselves, the club, the school to to sort of take control of of, you know, what happens in the education field. How how because some people do have maybe have a bit more of a challenge with, you know, what can we say no to? What can we push for? Yeah. <clears throat> well funnily enough, the club have always kind of said they've they've been quite good. They've always said, um, we've got a day release on, but you know, you're not forced to come. It, it's optional. Mm -hmm. By the same time, whilst I say it's optional, you're kind of mindful that, I mean, he, in his case, there's two other guys in his position. So there's three of them in total. And you're kind of mindful that if he's not there, the others are, well, it feels like they're, the others are, may may well be getting a slight advantage over him. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how I feel he'll feel. So that's always at my mind, in my mind, when I, when I consider day release. It's not so much about, it's, it's not even so much about, you know, what will he learn? It's, it's, I know, I try to put my mind, myself in his mind and I know he'll be thinking the other two are there or are likely to be there. I'm going to be falling behind. So I kind of have that in mind, but the school, they're, they're quite, they're, they've been, they've been good. I can't complain. And, um, they've, they've always said, look, we, we would rather he's in school 
And uh, whilst we can appreciate him being off here and there, because that happens in the general year anyway, you might be off for a flu or a cold. If it gets excessive, we, 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 we're we going to have to say an absolute no. So I've kind of taken a view that we're going to have to look at it as it goes and just sort of see, monitor, continue to monitor the education. Is he staying on track? Is he continuing to do well within the football academy? And then weigh up everything. Because obviously, if the child stops progressing within the football academy, then there could be an argument to say, well, is there any point in losing time or school? Mm. But it's just trying to find a balance, balance. that yeah. keeps the three parties happy, the player, the school, and the club feeling like, you know, you're still kind of committed to what's going on. Yeah. That's kind of how I've kind of dealt with it. Oh, and I love that. It's very responsive. You're just going to, you know, take each day as it comes, it sounds like, you know, respond yeah, to what needs to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he, he called us in, the headmaster called us in recently. And he, said, he actually said, where is this all going? Because I, I, I told him that they wanted to do, like, once every three weeks, they want to send one of them to Colney to do some sort of day release swing, and that's going to be a whole day off school, but, but only once every three weeks. And I worked out between now and the end of the season, it, was, it worked out about six days off school, which mm. I thought wasn't too bad. That's like, you know, that's probably what you have off if you had a bad cold. But he called us and was saying, where's this all going? When are you going to be asking me next for more time off? <laughs> <laughs> I, do feel a bit, I do feel a bit like, you know, it's like, oh, here comes another rumor. There's another rumor. Oh, <laughs> oh, more time off. There's a talk, some more time off. And I almost feel guilty asking for the time off, to be honest. But again, as I say, it's it's some some of it is a great experience. I don't want him to miss. So, for example, if he's traveling to Europe or he recently traveled to Brazil, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want him to miss that. I've never been to Brazil, and he's gone. Yeah. Before. <laughs> great. I was going to say, wait, Bola, rewind. Do you go with him? Do you get the opportunity well, to go for Brazil? For Brazil, they said parents. It was a parent-free kind of trip. <laughs> but absolutely, I try and get out there <laughs> to get their son too. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I like watching him, and I try to get to every single game that he participates in because I like to see. My, my big thing is always where is he at with this whole thing. So the only way for me to tell is not by speaking to the coaches because I, I I know that they only tell you what they to some extent what they feel as though you're ready to hear. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you the brutal truth. No way. So I, 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 I want to watch him in every game and just really get to understand how, where's he at in terms of this football club? Is he progressing? Is he ahead of what I perceive to be, you know, the rest of his peers? Or is he behind? Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And then that will, that will inform and help me to make decisions about other things, you know, like taking time off school. So I always like to be there. So uh, that's the reason why I travel to the tours. Nothing to do with the sun. And Nothing the to do with that, of course, culture. Nah, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, I'm not into <laughs> But well, just to rewind a bit, you talked about, obviously, the fact that sometimes he's not there. He might, in his mind, think of others, you know, getting more opportunities to do a bit more. Does that, How does that translate in terms of, like, extra coaching? Have you had to sort of invest in doing extras to, you know, to, to give him better chances? And, and what does that look like for you? That's an interesting question, actually, because I have, I have in the past, had people come in or, or taken him to extra sessions there and there. But I'm kind of indifferent about this because what happened, what, what I've noticed is, well, from a part of the practice sector, cost, and, 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 oh, and the club say, the official line from the club is that what we provide is enough. He doesn't need to do anything more. None of the kids need to do anything more outside the club. But in the past, I have taken him to, you know, like a private coach who's maybe worked on, particular areas or give them some extra all-round coaching and I, but I, I think where it helps is it gives him the on the plus side I think it gives him a bit of extra confidence to know or at least feel that I'm ahead because I've got this extra thing going on and in terms of actually how it benefits him I've got a mixed view on it because for a start his workload with school is is high but even as it stands he trains on Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Thursday, match on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So he's really only got Wednesday night off, Thursday night off, sorry, Wednesday night off, Friday night off, and Sunday. And that isn't really enough time to catch up on his homework. Because even as it stands, he often gets home from school and he's up till 11 o'clock at night doing homework, which is wow. really, for me, it's too late. He needs more time than that to sleep. So he doesn't get much time off. So in reality, the only time if he does anything extra would be on a Sunday. But at the same time, one part of me thinks, you know, should we be getting him in to do some extras? But at the same time, I often think, 
doing that means he's got zero days off in the week because Sunday's the only day he actually has off. So for me, I, I feel like I've, I've come to the point where I'm feeling like having time off, especially while he's growing a lot, there's a lot of changing with his body as well. He's getting taller, he's getting bigger. You know, his voice is breaking. It's, it's, there's all sorts of changes going on. The workload is increasing. There's, there's enough pressure going on in life anyway, probably for a young, a young kid of 15 years old. It's throwing him in to do another session the, the answer and, and I kind of feel like I'm not sure if it is I feel like that extra rest and time to reflect yeah helps equally now if it was a, a like a a week off in in you know maybe an Easter break or something like that or a couple of weeks off I might consider taking him to do a few bits to keep him engaged or if he said to me I feel like I'm behind in a particular area I might say should we see a coach to, to work on that? Or, or should we even just the two of us go out in the garden and do some work on that? Because mm -hmm. as I say, I think a lot of it is psychological, knowing in his mind that he's done extra. Yeah. It's probably more beneficial than the actual act of doing something extra. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's my, my feeling on it. Interesting. And, and how, in terms of your knowledge of football, yeah. and especially in the goalkeeping space, how much have you had yeah. to do to to start to learn to know about the game or is that not necessarily a thing because everyone else has got it you know down pat coaches the club oh no i've i've taken a big interest in in goalkeepers as a, as a as you know as far as their goals since he's been involved and so the watching youtube videos even watching matches i'm watching as a sub for example if there's a particular keeper that i i hear is one of the best in the country i'm, I'm I, I myself and i get i try and get him to do the same I tend to watch and take more notice of what they do in games. Yeah. I remember when in the lockdown period, we, we were doing loads of work in the garden, absolutely loads. Like, you know, two, three or four times a week, we'll be in the garden wow. doing- So you're a striker. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been striker, coach, everything, <laughs> you know? And, and so we, we, we were doing our own little bits and pieces. So I learned so much about the technical side of what they do. And I think that's helped because I can at least have a conversation that means something to him yeah whether he listens to me or not i don't know but it it, it at least means i can have a conversation about technical aspects that he can relate to fully and also when it when we go to do the reviews if the club say there's areas that we think he's strong in or there's areas we think he's need to work on i can totally understand where they're coming from and i can see it in the game and relate to it so it's definitely helped that i've taken a, an interest in football as a result of Kari being in the academy wow wow and just, just one other question on that, on sport in general. And I, and I know the, the club often talk about, especially as you're, you're young and you're developing, they talk about multi-sports and still you know, do other sports. When it comes to to school sports, is is he able to participate? Because there's a bit of a, you know, some people have a misconception that if you're in an academy that you, you know, that, you know, you cannot negate any other sport in school is, is he allowed to participate in school and sport and how do you feel about kind of about him doing it <clears throat> well he's he's he the, the, the club say yep he can do it the club do support the school as a whole so they always say we're quite happy for him in fact we we like the idea of him being involved and supporting his school club whether they actually like it or not i don't know but they yeah. certainly officially <laughs> officially they say yeah, yeah we support the school <laughs> let him go and play the game well, exactly. They probably when, when I walk when I walk out of the room, they're probably saying, "Oh my gosh, another player letting his son play football." But but he he likes playing football. In fact, he plays outfield for his club, uh, for his school, and does very very well, very well. But and I'm never gonna say don't play. The, the, I must admit, though, no, rugby though. I'm not sure about this rugby. Thing. <laughs> I remember the the first rugby game he had, the very first game that he had with his school. And I had, I really had heard so much about injuries in rugby. The very first game that he had, literally, he goes to, they travel to play a game. That first game, first clash, he broke his finger badly as well. Wow. He had to have, he had to have surgery. His, his finger was almost, almost completely snapped. It was horrible to look at. It was a real bad break. He had to have, K, what oh, they call it, KY shit. surgery or something like that. And from that moment, I thought, no rugby, no rugby. No rugby. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't blame I'm, you. I'm, not the hands, not the hands. No, I, exactly. I've, I've still been kind of anti rugby. I'm not so sure. I'm not too keen on rugby, if I'm honest, uh -huh. because they're diving, jumping, battering each other, you know, for almost no reason. Yeah. But other than that, besides rugby, I'm not too bad on school sport. 
Yeah. And uh, I do think that they can develop skills, different types of skills and coordination by doing different things. So I'm, I'm all for him doing different things, mm -hmm. apart from rugby. <laughs> I'm there with you yeah. on, the, on the rugby front. But yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. you, are you, because you're, it sounds like you're very engaged. Do you try and attend all the matches and all the, and are you standing? Yeah. We wanted to know this. Are you standing by the goal? <laughs> Where do you stand? <laughs> as far away from everyone else. <laughs> that's, that's a very, very interesting and important question. I'm not going to ask that question, but it's true. I do take a, 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 a there is a logical reason as to where I stand and why I stand where I stand. Love but it. yes, I do go to I, I do go to all the games. <laughs> yeah, I do go to all the games. And that's something I always make sure I do. I want to see, you know, how he's performing. Plus, I actually look forward to it. I like to see how he influences the game. But what I like to do is I don't like to I, I like to stand close to where he is so I can hear him, how he's communicating with the rest of his team. I get a great view of him, but not so close that it feels like you got a pair and watch an old game. It's you have a good game. So I'm kind of, not as far as the halfway line, but somewhere in between the halfway line and the goal line. So I kind of, Love it. you know, like a quarter way down. That's roughly where you'll find me. But does um, he look at you? Also, does, he, does he look at you? Is he no, looking for, no. okay. Uh -huh. No, not at all, not at all. In fact, he says he blacks out. He always tells us that he blacks out everybody that's there. So you know, but there are, cause there are a lot of parents that talk to children and having a, you see a conversation going on, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. For me, that just, I can't see how that's helping the child. Mm. And that in itself is a whole subject in its own right, because... Are we very know, interested in that subject, Bola? Who are the parents being? <laughs> <laughs> this is your wisdom, right? And what's the worst behaviour you've been? I want to know, I want to know, we, 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 we call it the, the PBB, parents behaving badly. What is your story? <laughs> well, Have you, I don't think you've ever done it, Bola. You sound model parent. No, no, I, no, no. I, it, it's, I'll tell you what, what I remember when, I remember when he was, I think he was under 10's age group and I was, he was played up at that time, I thought the under 11's team, his first game and they were playing a game and I think the game, the result was 2-2. Right at the end of the game, literally about the last kick of the game, I think the opposition striker came in and he was slow to shift his body, slow to make his pass, he got caught and they scored and they lost the game. I was like, God, oh, wake up, what are you doing? And I remember he was like, oh, but I'll try that. He said something back to me responded and I could see he was really upset and I thought oh my god what have I done because he was in tears I could see he was in tears yeah. where I was standing so he was his head was down he was sort of you know he, he kind of sat down on the pitch and I was just thinking oh what have I done here because I could see he, he was already broken and I'd realized that my reaction and the way I'd reacted was clearly very loud and he was I just thought and I remember the coach spoke to him after the game because he was upset and I remember I said to him on the way home I'm so sorry that, that I did that. And I promise you that I'll never, that's never going to happen again for me. And I've never since ever said anything to him in the game since that day, because what I've come to realize is, especially as a goalkeeper, probably the same for other positions as well. There's a lot of pressure to play in those situations, And it, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's difficult. They play with other very good players. And I realized that they need somebody they need an escape route after the game for me. They need to be able to put it behind them. Do you know what I mean? Just put it behind them. Maybe give them some feedback, but then just forget about it so they could talk about other things. They wouldn't be able to escape that bubble. And I feel like that's the best help as a parent that I can give him. There are parents that I've seen, uh, going back to the point that you mentioned, shouting at children, what are you doing? Take the basketball trophy. And I just think to myself, oh my God. I, I, I sometimes try to say to them, politely, but there's a kind of unwritten rule. Can't really tell another parent how to talk to their child at football. <laughs> Just can't do it. And well, I, I mean, for parents that I know very well, I try to say, you know, he's trying and da, 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 da. But uh, it's very hard to say to somebody, why you, don't talk to your child like that, da, 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 da. So what I tend to do myself, if I, if I see a parent on the sideline, say something which I perceive to be negative to the child, I would usually, say, keep your head up, well done, keep going, yeah. to try and balance it. I try to balance it a little, just to throw a bit of positive out there because I know that it's hard for these children. Mm -hmm. I've, seen, I've seen parents arguing with each other over, over the football. I've seen, I've seen parents, I've, I've seen parents arguing with opposition kids on the pitch, talking to kids, why are you doing it, while the game is going on. I've seen some, some of the behavior from parents is terrible. 
But as I say, even mine, when I shouted that time, mm -hmm. I think that was bad behavior. And then the reality of it is, these kids are just learning a trick. They're out there learning, not Premier League footballers yet anyway. But they're out there in an environment which is very competitive, just trying to learn a trade. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we really could do as parents is support them. It's not easy. There's something about football. I don't know why, but there's just something about football, particularly on the sidelines, which makes us just become this whole other animal. Mm -hmm. but we have to, <laughs> it's crazy. We have, to, we have to check ourselves. I don't know what happens, but we just have to check ourselves as parents yeah. and realize that what That's, it is. Absolutely. On, on that point, do you think that how a parent is being has an influence on the the journey ahead, you know, and in respect of how the coaches see you, how the club see you, do you think that has any burden on, you know, how you navigate this journey and what your, you know, potential is going it, forward? I think it does, you know, because I think it all comes back to how much is the child. I think everything comes back to one thing: how much is the child enjoying playing football? I think everything boils down to that. The success, how far he, how long he's in the game for, how long he continues for, it all boils down to how much is he enjoying the experience. Now, when when you when a parent's putting pressure on the child, the child is going to start, in my opinion, anyway, to 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 like it less and less and less. You're kind of chipping a little bit at that child's love for the sport, because no child wants to be in an argument or a, a loggerhead with their parent. And the more that the parent is having a go at them for something that's not done well, in my in my opinion, what that's doing is that's taking away a little part of the child's love for the game. And the more and more and more that goes on, I think you're moving down the road of eventually a point when a child starts to lose that love of things. How much do I really want to do this? How much do I want to keep getting on my dad's nerves? You know, I'd rather just do something else. And eventually the love just fizzles out. And they lose confidence. Yeah, there yeah, is confidence yeah, as well. Confidence. confidence is a big, big, big part of it. It's a confidence game. Football is a confidence game. It's it's a psychological, I think more than 50% of it is a, is a confidence game. It's psychological in my opinion. And then the rest is technical. But if, if, if they're being chipped at, they're being moaned at and shouted at, can't do anything for the confidence. And the love eventually of the game is just going to fizzle out. So that's something that I, I think we have to we have to be mindful of as parents. We have, we really have to ask ourselves what role are we are we playing here and why are we here? Oh, is it because we want our child, you know, we 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 want them to play for our club, you know, as the main the main player? Is it because of our own personal interest or is it for them? If it's for them, we have to really ask ourselves how can we support them on the journey. That's really what it's about. I love that. So much wisdom in that. You know, I'm in grassroots and I see a lot of, you know, very entangled, engaged parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I love them. Including her, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I have had to learn, you know, you get so passionate about it. But I am, mm. I am generally very positive, you know, like unless I see one of my kids arguing with a coach, then I'm like, what you doing? Other than that, I train like you. You know, I want to support the game, support the players, help, you know, be the number one fan, right? Like, come on, you can yeah. do this. We're sort of seven nil down. But you know, for <laughs> me, it's, I, we're so with you. This is why part of the project we're doing, you know, number one fan. It's like, who are we being? And I just feel like you modeled that in, in the stories you're telling just so beautifully. Mm. You've got so much awareness about who you were being and what could be helpful to your child. And I think a lot of parents do struggle with that. It, you know, they do get very involved. Yeah. I mean, as I said at the start, I mean, I, I, I tried to approach, I tried to approach this from a, I, I believe that a lot of it is mindset. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I try to think about it from a mindset perspective. At the end of the day, it's a child of a dream and a vision trying to achieve something. I've been some, I've been that child as well. I've been that young person that wanted to do something and, you know, wanted to start my business and make a success of it. And I know that at the end of the day, the child with a vision just wants to be something and therefore I always try to support that where I can I mean, it can be a little bit tricky as well because at the, at the end of the day you know that you want them to keep an option in in terms of education and stuff you want to make sure that they pursue education as far as possible but at the same time you want to support their journey in football and at the same time the journey that I try to avoid give the message I try to avoid sending to, to him is Education, you don't really need education because you're going to make it in football. You're going to be the best. 
So you kind of have to find this balance between saying, well, you, if you keep working hard, you keep on doing what you're doing, you can be the best. Of course you can be the number one in the world. At the same time, well, but <laughs> keep the education there as an option because you never quite know what might happen. There is always that finding, that balance in it, Absolutely. which I think is important yeah. in terms of the way I communicate. Or well, we as a household, as a family, communicate to Kari. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's sending two messages at the same time. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Actually, on that point of family, obviously you're, you know, you're supported. You mentioned you've got a wife and, and, and we know you've got other children as well. How invested are they in this journey? And obviously, I mean, I'm not sure if they have their own activities. Are they in other sports or doing other things? How, how are they on this journey with you? And what, what's the support that as a whole you are you know, able to, to provide? Yeah, well, they've, they've actually been very good. So better did so my wife. She she she's always been supportive from the start. Obviously, right at the start when I take him to grassroots, she didn't do any of those drives. But now she's doing her bit. She's doing her bit with the drives to the academy. But she's very supportive. You know, she's mentally supportive as well. She tried to, especially if he thinks that maybe he had a bad game or things aren't going as well as they did. In those moments, she'll always try and lift his head up. And I think it's quite nice that in some ways that she comes with a fresh approach because he always sees me every game watching, doesn't see her every game. So it's quite nice sometimes to say, well, this is what happened and this is where I thought I could have been better. And someone could just say, well, don't worry about it. You know, so I think that's quite nice. The younger two, my daughter's very engaged in a lot of sports. She does quite a lot of sport with school. My youngest son, he's not interested in sport. He's more interested in YouTube. But, <laughs> but then, why not, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but they're both very supportive. I mean, I do find though it's a good it's a good point you question you ask because i do find that and i'm mindful that i spend a lot more time supporting kari's sport than i do supporting in my daughter's sport and all they see all they see is i'm mindful that all they see is me with him a lot more than i'm with them and that's something that does play in my mind as well and i i i in particular because my my daughter as i say she's good at sport at school but she's just not as, it, as you know, she's not taking it as far as he has. Mm -hmm. So this is something I'm, I'm mindful of. So for example, she's got like a nationals cricket finals this weekend um, yeah. in Nottingham. Yeah. And, and yeah, so yeah, so so I'm thinking I need to go to that to support that things like that because you know I look back and think I wonder how she feels. She's never said anything or never complained, and she's always been cool. But I just wonder how she feels seeing me go to all of his games but not going to her school games for example and that's something I do feel a bit guilty about if I'm honest and I do want to I do want to correct that we'll see you at cricket then will we on text us number one fan of the cricket <laughs> I'll be screaming and shouting at her <laughs> obviously they hear that but yeah so, it's, so they're, they're generally supportive but it's, it's yeah so he's, he's quite fortunate there love it and just to, just to close we always like to ask get a sense like if you had like a billboard that you could put up in grassroots that spoke to parents on the pitch yeah <laughs> what would you say <laughs> i'd probably say it, it would relate to support for the child i'd probably say something like remember that they have come to learn they're not the finished product mm. they've come to learn let's support them and i'd probably say positive contribution only and and that's how that's what i'd want to say because i do give feedback at the end of the game but i try to keep it positive i would just try to get them to realize and remember that they've, they've come to learn mm -hmm. and that's the bottom line they're not the finished product yet they're not the perfect player in fact Premier League players make mistakes. They're, even Premier League players aren't finished. Mm. So I'd be just driving that message. They're here to learn. They're not finished product. Let's support them positively. Something like that, I'd probably say. Beautiful. How'd that sound? Lovely. <laughs> That's great. But the final, final thing is if you were to give three top tips to other goalie parents, what would they okay. be? Ooh, three top tips. <laughs> All right. Well, I, what would I say to other goalkeeper parents? I would say, well, one would be related to the same thing. One would be, they'll, they they will make mistakes. It's it's part of the learning process because that's something that it, it's quite easy when a goal goes in through a goalkeeper mistake as well. 
quite easy to think, why, why did you do that? Because I, I've done it. You know, I thought, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? So they'll make, they'll make mistakes. That's definitely one I would say. What else would I say? I would say the, I would say it's, they, they'll go through moments where they're maybe not at their best and are better than their best. They won't always be at their best and they won't always be worse than their best. In other words, it's an up and down journey. I would definitely want them to realize that because it's easy to think that because they're ahead of the pack, then they're always going to be ahead of the pack. But when, when things change or if things change, wow, that would be a shock to you and the, and the child. So prepare yourself that there's going to be ups and downs. That's definitely one I would try and get people to realize that it's a journey of ups and downs because there's so many things affecting whether or not a child has a good game, right down to, did he have a good night's sleep the night before? Mm-hmm. So that's another one, ups and downs. What final one would I say? I would probably just say, get them to try to get them to remember to enjoy the experience. Mm-hmm. Just try and remember to get them to enjoy the experience and, and keep checking that. Are they enjoying what they're doing? Mm-hmm. But try to get them to remember to enjoy it. Because as I said, it, we don't know how long they're going to be in this for. So let's try and get them to enjoy it as part of a life experience. Love that. Thank you. I've got number four. Don't play rugby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stay away from rugby. Well, oh, I was Everyone. gonna say, I was gonna say number four. Don't stand behind the goal. I think it grassroots. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I remember. I, see see, I remember with the one tournament. Oh, well, when we go one tournament, when the is first, I thought so sorry for this child. They were the team. We went to a tour, a, a tour overseas. I think it was in Holland or somewhere. We were absolutely battered the opposition team. I thought so sorry for the opposition goalkeeper. And his dad was stood right behind the goal, literally talking to him and telling him what to do. Oh, why are you going there? Don't let us up. I was cringing, absolutely cringing. And that was the only time I actually saw a parent standing behind the goal. I've done it, Bola. I'm just saying. I'm just owning up. <laughs> they put oh, my son. Oh, he's tiny. <laughs> my son is tiny. He's like the smallest on the team. And he was in goal. And I was like, <gasps> and he looked terrified. So I was like, Dad, it's okay. It's okay. You got this. <laughs> and he turned around oh, and went, go away. <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go so extra you know there's loads, there's loads of bits you can throw in there a bit of extra tips tips for the people i love it yeah thank oh, you no, so cool. much no that this has been a really great chat with you Bob. what a treat we really yeah. enjoyed it yeah oh you're welcome you're welcome so you're welcome it's been a pleasure chatting to you guys as well and i love what you guys are trying to do with this number one fan so you. good luck with it and thank you know you i'll be so cheering much. all the way we're gonna get you involved, Bola. You're amazing. We loved her. Well, Thanks well, so I'll much. be your. I'll, I'll. I think I'll be you guys' number one fan. Uh, no. Don't worry. We'll we'll get you the merch to wear at the sidelines. Worry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Absolutely. you should get a gold star for the definitely. Yeah, you know, self awareness. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you. Now we need some predictions before we close. We're not sh- sure when this is gonna air, but we need some predictions on how we're gonna end the league. We've got three Arsenal fans here. Champions at last. We, really? at last. <laughs> we believe. We're going, to, we're, go, we're going to perform one of our best seasons in recent years. Finish with more points than we did the unbeatable season. Mikhail will be knighted. And, <laughs> and, 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 they'll, and they'll be calling our boys desperately to come and train, you know, get in there. They'll be have, they'll have an empty seat for us. Our boys on the, on the first team benches. I love your enthusiasm. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Well, uh, Positive. We'll thank good. you so much um yeah, thank you so much to you guys too look forward to speaking to you again in the future and and you know following kari's his journey and we wish him and your whole family all the very best yeah thank you thank you very much take care, take care of yourself